Hey everyone, welcome back to India. In our last video, we were in the holy city of Varanasi, soaking in the sights, smells, and sounds of the Ganges River. Since then, we have made our way to the historical city of Kolkata. In today's video, we are going to be kicking off our time in Kolkata with a night food tour, and we are once again partnering with a chef's tour today because we had such an incredible time in Delhi with them. We are super stoked to be exploring the Bengali cuisine today. Okay, we found Avik. He's going to be our local guide today in Kolkata. That's probably the best way you can try local food with a local person. We're going to stop at 10 to 12 outlets today. Fish, meat, and all sorts of different sorts yeah. of surprises that are Yeah, yeah. Up. Well, this is awesome because I skipped lunch and I'm ready to eat, so let's Good go. Idea. All right, Avik has said we are having a welcome ceremony. From what we understand, the purpose of this is really just to start off the tour with lots of good luck. I think we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. Special lassi. Okay, so we've learned that special lassi in this context means fruit lassi. So we are getting pomegranate lassi. The concept is to soak your past fruit and to whet your appetite for the richer foods that are lined up. Ah, okay, getting ready for all the rich food. Wow. Thank you. Look at that. Ooh. Mmm. Ooh. I can really taste the pomegranate. It's got a little bit of that pomegranate tang that you first get when you have pomegranate. But it's sweet as well from the fruit. Mmm. Delicious. It's like juice. The pomegranate juice mixed with lassi, but definitely not a stick. I like that. So for anybody who isn't familiar with lassi, lassi is a curd-based drink, and of course in this instance we've added fruit to the curd. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is kind of cool. The restaurant that we're about to go into, it's like so squishy and small. There's only really room for one person to go in and out. <laughs> one-way traffic. So dining and dashing is not an option here. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here is mutton kosha. So mutton here is like very young uh, goat that has actually, the meat has actually been sitting and cooking on a stone for 10 to 12 hours. And that's what gets it super, super tender and really easy and delicious to eat. Okay, and we've got a paratha to eat it with. This is a classic Indian bread. Oh man, this is tough. I don't know how to get it off. <laughs> and that's a tamarind sauce. Oh my god. This is super good. Look at that. It's like fatty, incredibly rich, really soft meat. Oh, nice. And it feels spicy, but our guide was telling us it's actually not spicy from like, like a spicy, a spicy herb or anything like that. It's actually spicy from so much cinnamon being used in the dish. Oh wow, Kolkata, from what we've learned so far, is one of the best places to get meat. I mean, on the menu, I guess the only thing that's really truly vegetarian on the menu is onion. Everything else is like a delicious meat dish, and this, this lives up to its name. This is so good. Okay, that place has to be one of the coolest, most authentic, on-the-wall restaurants. Never in a million years would you find that place on, on your own. Going with a local, it's gotta be the way to go. This is the first time we've ever been on a human-powered rickshaw. It is so, so a interesting. A human-powered rickshaw with no bike. <laughs> no, that's true. So we've been learning a lot about this, and while it looks like this might be like an exploitation of human labor, it is really actually far more legitimate than what you might think. First of all, all the human-powered rickshaws here are like all registered. They've got their like own individual license plates. Yeah. And secondly, what it really does is it provides employment for a lot of the people 
who are seasonal workers, namely farmers here mm -hmm. in and around Calcutta. This is like one great source of employment for them, mm -hmm. like during the off season. And it, well, I think that's something that's really cool about it that Avik was telling us is that it also helps them to maintain like their physical fitness because of course as farmers are doing incredibly physically demanding work. So this allows them to stay super fit and continue to make income when the harvest is over. That is a super cool way to see the neighborhood. All right, next up we got a very popular street food snack here. It is lentil seeds and peanuts mixed in with like vegetables and other spices. Apparently it's really well appeared with alcohol, so we're right next to the liquor store. <laughs> He's positioned very well in front of the liquor store right now. <laughs> Just dump it in my hand, eat it all. Oh, you can pick and eat, pick and choose and eat. I'll try lots at once. Ready? Ooh. Mmm. Mostly salty. Mmm. I'd say predominantly salty, but actually, the raw onion I can taste quite a lot as well. Mmm. That is very good. And of course, it's a little spicy. There's chopped up jalapenos in there. <laughs> this is like the perfect. Beer mix, you know, a beer, sports games, this thing that we can't remember, so we'll put the name on the screen. Chana Dal. <laughs> Chana Dal. That was awesome. It's similar stuff uh, sold in packets in, in airports and other places. Uh, nothing matches the real deal. Here's the real deal. He lost his own world in the middle of the road. <laughs> if you don't have a sports game, you don't need one here in India. <laughs> you can just stand on any corner and just watch people and get some of this. Absolutely. Never a dull moment in Kolkata. No. <laughs> and if we continue doing this long enough, we'll gather a crowd around us. We'll stop to just to watch us. I believe that. I actually believe that. I really believe in that. In India, that could happen. <laughs> Bombay. Okay. In Delhi, it's called Golgappa, mm -hmm. and over here, it's called Puchka. Puchka. Okay, so what Puchka is, is like a dough ball, and then it gets cracked in the middle, and then inside you put like potato and mint sauce, like mint chutney, I think he called it, and then like a tamarind water, and then you just like chuck it in your mouth as fast as you can before all of the broth falls out of your little puff. Okay, Puchka. All together. Yeah. <laughs> There's an explosion of taste in your mouth. That's an understatement. <laughs> oh, I really like that. I think I like that even better than the one we had in Delhi. So in one go. <laughs> Whoa. You're so much more graceful. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah? I like this one a lot. Smoother. Mm. The flavors make sense. The one that we had in Delhi, it was just like... Oh, <laughs> they're getting punched. It was a lot. There's like more of a massage. Yeah. <laughs> this is one more way to enjoy the food. All right, this one has none of the water stuff, which makes it way, way simpler to eat. Mmm. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's really crunchy. Like, you don't realize how crunchy the dough is when you have the ones that are like full of broth because the crunch disappears. So that is crunchy. All right, we've just arrived at Allen's, which is obviously like a super Western name. So I guess a Scotsman started this restaurant many, many years ago. And then when the British left, he actually passed down the restaurant to somebody else and they continue to have the same, like the same food. It's a fish and chip shop right here in the middle of India, of Kolkata. Uh, the fish that is used is lobster prawn. Lobster prawn? Lobster prawn. The lobster prawn is split open like a butterfly. And then the batter goes on. Then the batter goes on. And then it gets deep fried in heat. And then it gets deep fried in heat. Fish and chips from a 125 year old shop. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was really good. What I like about it is that. The fish is like the centerpiece of the flavor. I feel like the other fish and chips we've had, the flavor is really overpowering from the like the batter or like exactly. the, whatever's crisping it. But here, I actually don't really taste that as much as I do with the fish. The fish is like right in your face, and you could that's the first thing that you taste. The fact is, the main attraction of the treat is the fish. 
Yeah. And everything around it should be in a way so that it helps you get the yeah. fish, yeah. Get, get the best flavor of the fish. And that's how it's been done. Okay, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I don't eat seafood, but when in India. <laughs> mm. I think it was good that I got the end because it's pretty deliciously. It tastes like buttery from the ghee. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. I would actually have another bite of that. You said I would like this. And I was like, I don't like seafood. Maybe I didn't eat the fish. I think it might have just got batter. <laughs> okay, okay, let's try again. All right. That's actually quite good. Not bad at all, truly. It's because it's buttery. It tastes so good. For Nicola to say that's actually <laughs> quite good on a seafood dish, that speaks volumes. So Nicole and I are both pretty full and it's actually quite well timed because at this part of the tour we're actually just kind of walking around the neighborhood enjoying the quieter side of Kolkata. We're away from the main street and it's kind of neat to just see the local life people like just like living and carrying out their evenings relaxing or working in their shops and then we're also learning quite a bit about the architecture and the history here in Kolkata and just like how rich and deep it is. That's how we go to Okay, we've made it to a 110 year old shop that sells vegetable fritters. We're going to try mango, I know that's a fruit, but mango fritter and an onion fritter. Or else we get run over first. <laughs> Savory mango fritter. Okay. This is uh, soya bean, made out of soya bean chunks. <laughs> oh, mm. it is very good. It's like a meal. Like it's like dense. It's kind like a samosa if you're only going by the filling. Mm -hmm. It's like a samosa. But the, yeah, the outside feels very different. The breading is actually really soft. It's not like crunchy. It doesn't feel so deep fried. Mm. So mango has been concocted with a lot of other spices and uh, vegetables to yeah, give it a savory taste. Yeah, because I don't really taste, like I wouldn't, if you just hand this to me and said what's yeah, yeah. in it, I wouldn't say mango. You wouldn't associate it with the mango. No. Mm -mm. Second one, what did you say the name was? This is a soya bean uh, fried fritter. Ooh, so I like how it's like crumbly. The outside is like crumbly. crunchy, cr right. crumbly. Not the very onion fritter. Oh, it's and, very hot. <laughs> very crispy and crunchy on the outside. And it will melt like butter in your Ooh. mouth. Ooh. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it smells like an onion ring. But it looks nothing like an onion ring. Look at that. It's burning my hands. <laughs> oh. Salty, crispy, deep fried onion. We have this with what we had earlier with the, those peanuts and lentils. Oh, oh I love yeah. it. And uh, yeah, interestingly, good. interestingly, that makes a very, very um, uh, you know authentic combination. People yeah. try this and that together yeah. oh, with really? a cup of tea. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Saves the cost on the dinner. Yeah. And at the same time, kills time at a stretch. Oh. <laughs> this is really good. So you can tell this place is really good because in the short amount of time that we've been here eating, they have been churning through so many customers. Like it is busy, very local shop, very, very busy. It's got to be it's delicious food and it, and it really was. I love me some chai. This is ginger chai. I don't think I've had ginger chai yet. Mm. It's delicious. It's so good. I love how sweet the chai is here. So we've had a lot of chai in India. It's funny because like the country has so much variety in dishes and cuisine. And like even here we're finding the Bengali cuisine and here in, in Kolkata is so varied and different than what we've had before, especially yeah. in our last tour in Delhi. But it's nice to have a little piece of consistency <laughs> with the chai tea. I think we're about to take the public bus. That was our 
our first India bus experience. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm so glad we did that. I, I felt like, honestly, it was a roller coaster. <laughs> All right, so we are now walking through College Street. It is aptly named because there are a lot of educational institutions around here. And also, there are a lot of book vendors around here. So you can see so many different shops filled with different books. And we're just bouncing in and out of buildings, just kind of soaking in the atmosphere and admiring the architecture of College Street. We're at a shop called Paramount, which is over 100 years old and has been run by the same family for all of that time. And all they do is sell drinks, healthy, delicious drinks. So I've got green mango, and I got Mango Mania. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my, there's oh. stuff on there. Oh. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> so it's, mm. it's mine is sweet, is your sweet? Mm-hmm. Remember that juice, that drink we had in Delhi? You know, like push the top in. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks! It reminds me a little bit of that, and I think it's because of whatever spice is used in here. This Mango Maniac is amazing. There's more than just mango here, it's like a, Sorbet, there's peanuts in there. That is so good. <laughs> We've been told that you'll never find this anywhere else in India. Just right in this shop. It's like very unique. It's very, very delicious. It looks like a sweatshop, but what it actually is, is a sweet shop. And the people in there are like boiling the milk that they use to make all the sweets. And they gotta keep doing that, like stirring it continuously, otherwise it'll burn. That's a lot of dedication to make these sweets. It looks like a scorching hot job. And everybody in there is like shirtless and just like sweating like crazy. In Kolkata, we've learned that the sweet store is at the cornerstone of every good neighborhood. So when you walk into a neighborhood, there's usually like one sweet store that has like everything that everybody in that neighborhood kind of goes for. Chandesh refers to the texture, sweet meat, it's called chandesh. Oh, it's cold. This, it's cold. Oh. And the flavor and the taste is spread out in layers. So the moment you have it, it's like the ice cream part of it, it'll melt in your mouth. It's, it's properly like frozen, like, like ice cream. <laughs> oh, it's almost like a frozen powder with a little bit of liquid. It's delicious. Basically, the crux of it is milk cream. Yeah. Then they put in uh, rose water, pistachio, nuts, yeah. and loads of other stuff to make it into a nice delectable sweet. Wow. wow. Yeah, like really does melt in your mouth. Wow. The sweetness is in, is in layers, and I feel like there's different textures happening. Exactly. That's a really nice, very subtle, like, dessert. So we tried a whole bunch of different desserts. <laughs> We're not gonna go into what each of them are and how they all taste it, but spoiler alert, they're all amazing. You're just gonna have to come here and try all these desserts for yourself. Just pick a few out and try them. <laughs> That's so good. Wow, you guys, that was seriously so good. Such an excellent food tour. I know we mentioned at the beginning we did this tour with a chef's tour and we could not recommend them more highly. What I loved about it is that it felt like it was more than just a food tour. It was like a full-on Indian experience. We got right in there with the locals, trying the food and trying out a bit of our daily life here in Kolkata. Yeah, and just going to places we definitely would not have gone by ourselves. And it was such a great way to be introduced to the city because we've just arrived, we haven't explored, and this was a great way to get to know Kolkata a little bit. We'll put more info down in the description about a chef's tour if you want to check them out. But I think we'll leave you guys there and the next video we'll be exploring more of Calcutta. We will see you there. Thanks for watching. I feel like it also needs to be said that there is not a lot of room on this little <laughs> seat. Our, our hips are barely in this seat. Uh, so it's a cozy, it's a cozy ride. Make sure that if you get on this with another person, you know them very well. Actually, make sure if you get on this, you do it at the beginning of your food tour and not at the end because my hips aren't going to fit anymore after a couple hours. Not to mention I'd feel bad because it would be so much work for him to pull us in three hours so, when we're super full. So true.